All right, so let's take a look at this problem. This one is called best time to buy and sell stock two. It's another array problem. And again, as I said in my previous video, if you're thinking about arrays, you're probably gonna be thinking, do I need to sort the array? Should I use an alternate index? Uh, should I also maybe use any other additional data structures? Well, we'll get to that. So let's go ahead and read through this problem. You're given an integer array prices where prices of I is the price of a given stock on the ith day. On each day, you may decide to buy and or sell the stock. You can only hold at most one share of the stock anytime. However, you can buy it and then immediately sell it on the same day. Find and return the maximum profit you can achieve. So it's pretty important the parts they bolded here uh, you don't have to think about, can I buy a bunch of shares where I'm trying to figure out, uh, you know, I want to buy a bunch because today it's one and tomorrow it's 10 and that's the biggest gap. You don't think about that. They just said uh, you can only buy one. So that eliminates that. And the fact that you can buy it and immediately sell it the same day means you also don't have to time the market either. You can immediately get out. So there's nothing about this that actually is tricky in the sense compared to the real stock market. So whenever you're approaching problems like this, uh, just keep in mind that the problem, the way it's worded, might sound intimidating if you overthink it and try not to actually look at it that way. So here in this example, you'll understand even further what I'm saying. They're saying that our max profit is seven. The reason being is that if you buy on day two, which is where the price is one, and then if you sell on day three, where the price is five, five minus one is four and then you buy on day four where the price is three and you sell on day five where it is six then it is six minus three equals three so then now you add that four and the three and you get seven so also keep in mind that if you bought here on one and then let's say this increased to three and you sold there you'd have a profit of two and then five was here and you you bought and so you could buy again and sell here so you could have one three five and it would be the same as just going one to five and then not buying between five and three and that's because you don't have to time the market that's why i'm saying don't overthink this problem just think about it from one day to the next and so if i'm looking at this all i'm realizing that all i have to do is just say is the current day i'm looking at is it less than the next day and if it is then i just need to take that difference consider that i've just timed it perfectly, take that difference and add it to my profit. And it's as simple as that. So here's your other additional information you always want to keep in mind. They are telling you that no matter what, you will at least have an array of index or an array where the, the size is at least once. So you'll have at least index zero being valid. Now, the other thing that you need to know is that your prices are bound. You're not going to have negative prices. That wouldn't make any sense, but you also don't have to check for it when you're solving this problem. In a real world scenario, you might check for it in your code just to prevent invalid input. But right now, these are our constraints. So now how are we going to actually track uh, what our profit is? So, you know, our profit will say that the profit is stored as a value will start it as zero. And then what we're going to do is we're going to iterate through our array. So we'll say int i equals zero, while i is less than prices dot length, and then i plus plus. Now let's think about this. If I iterate here, um, this will actually get me to the very end of the array, but then I can't compare to the value at the end because I will fall off the array. So I'm actually going to want to say minus one here. Reason being, let's say there's only two elements in our array. Uh, so we're looking at the first element here, and then we want to compare it to the second element and say, is the second element bigger? Well, then if it is, we'll go ahead and add that to our profit. But then when we get to the second element, we don't want to end up trying to compare it to another element that doesn't exist because we've fallen off the end of the array at that point. So that's why we're going to stop when we're at one element from the end. And then additionally, uh, when you know that your array is at least going to have one value in it, then I will end up being zero. 
and prices will have a length of one. So it'll be one minus one. So if I is less than zero, which is not, so it'll automatically not go into this for loop and you don't have to worry about that condition either. So now we'll go ahead and say that we're going to return our profit at the end. So now we need to actually calculate our profit. And like I said earlier, you don't have to really consider whether or not you're trying to time it because you're not buying so many shares. You don't need to know uh, ahead of time if it seems like the right time to get in. When you're iterating through this problem, you get to know what the price is of the price is tomorrow and just know that you could just buy it and have a profit. So all you're going to do is just say that if the price of today is less than the price of tomorrow then our profit will equal our profit plus the price of the tomorrow value minus price of today's value and to make this a little bit more readable we can actually change this. So we'll just call it int value equals that. So this is that value we're gonna add and we can even do a plus equals operator. And so that basically what that will do is it'll say profit equals profit plus and then our value. So again, just iterating what this does, we're going through, if we have at least two elements, we're going to hit coming here with the first element. We're going to say is our first element less than our second element. If it is, then we want to store this value temporarily. We don't have to do this, but just for readability for us while we're trying to walk through this problem, it makes a little bit more sense. Our profit that we've gotten in this one day to the next is just the value of the next day minus the current day and then we add that to our total profit and then at the end we return our profit and we're done so i'll go ahead and submit this accept it and for this your big o the complexity will just be n because you're going just through this array one time you're not iterating through it multiple times you're not uh you're doing anything else like sorting or anything crazy like that and the other thing is that your space will be constant. It's constant because you're not storing anything else extra other than this profit value, which is your you know your constant extra space, which is really not that much. So you know it's constant because it's not n. If you were storing uh, you know profit for all of the prices from one day to the next, you know you could end up storing uh, big O of n as your space but you're not you're literally just storing only your profit and then returning at the end so like i said your constant space complexity here and the time complexity is just big o of n if you have any questions let me know in the comments below and let me know if there's any other problems you'd like to see in our future videos